<laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Kathy. <laughs> yeah, we're going to be married 19 years tomorrow. That's hard to believe. For those of you that are, uh, maybe this is your first time, uh, yeah, Corey and I are married. Uh, and we always spend our time on Sunday reading and speaking the word together. Uh, and um, that's something that really we felt is something that is specific to us. And so we're going to open our Bibles today. Uh, if you have your Bibles with you, go ahead and get them out at this time. We're starting a brand new sermon series today called Viewpoint. Uh, and we're going to be talking for the next four weeks on four disciplines that are necessary for a, a powerful Christian walk. Now, the minute I say discipline. Uh, that is something that most of us really struggle with. Amen? Yeah. Let's just be honest today. Come on, get those hands up. Uh, do you struggle with discipline? I know I do. Uh, and you know, putting these disciplines into our lives uh, as believers are, are meant to help and build us up. But many of us struggle with these, these four things that we're going to be talking about uh, from week to week. Uh, those four things, if you're taking notes, those four things over the next four weeks are fasting, praying, Giving and serving. Praying, fasting, giving, and serving. Over the next four weeks, we're going to be talking about our the way we view these four things. Because how we view these four disciplines will determine whether or not we receive anything when we do them. When we <coughs> implement them in our lives, it really depends on our viewpoint of those four things. Uh, and uh, so if you have your Bibles, turn with us to Luke chapter 18. Uh, is where we're going to go today. And we're going to begin this conversation by looking at a story that Jesus tells, an illustration that Jesus gives, uh, that's going to cover all four of the disciplines, but specifically today, as we talk about fasting, it's going to help us di dive deeper into uh, how to make this thing work for us. Right, now, our core value that we are uh, kind of focusing on today is create. Now, we have four core values in uh, and how our church kind of functions and in creating a relationship with God we know that it's important that discipline in these areas these four areas of um, you know, fasting and praying and giving and serving are a part of your life without these um, things in your Christian walk you you're kind of missing out on the things that are fundamental to being a Christian yeah I think sometimes uh, when we think about that 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 phrase, create a relationship with God. That's that's our, our core value. A lot of people think that we create a relationship with God once for all. Can you follow me here? Because this is important. We, we think that we create a relationship when we come to the altar and, and, and confess our sin and let God forgive us. And that is true. We are creating a relationship with God in that moment. But how many of you know that if I get married to this woman and then never speak to her again, I'm not going to stay married very long. Amen. amen. Can I get an amen for the man in the room there? Um, right. He needs to serve. He needs to give. Yeah. He needs help. I need to pray that I survive the day. And uh, no, no, just kidding. I'm, whatever. Anyway, um, so here's the idea. The idea is that to create a relationship with God... It's more than just a one-time thing. These four disciplines actually help us to create a relationship with God consistently in our life. So to have them working for us would be really, really important. Now, when I say these four things, fasting, praying, giving, and serving, most of us would say, I have to do those things, right? right. Yeah. Our default setting is, I have to pray, I have to give, I have to fast. I have to serve. It's something that God requires of me. Or the other end of it would be, um, I know I should, but I can't. Yes. I should give. I should fast. I should pray. I should serve. Whoops, the other one I forgot. Anyway, you get the idea. I, here's the thing. Today and the next four weeks, we want to change the have to into get to. There's a big difference between having to and getting to. I get to serve. I get to fast. I get to pray. And I get to give. When our attitude and our viewpoint of these four things shifts, that's when these things come alive. And it's actually a picture of it in uh, Luke 18, which they're going to put up 
uh, this verse up on the screen, Luke 18, uh, starting in verse 9, it says, Then Jesus told this story to some who had great confidence in their own righteousness and scorned everyone else. Two men went to the temple to pray. One was a Pharisee, and the other was a despised tax collector. So you have this really righteous person and this really unrighteous person both coming into the temple to pray. Verse 11, the Pharisee stood by himself and prayed this prayer. I thank you, God, that I am not a sinner like everyone else. For I don't cheat, I don't sin, and I don't commit adultery. I'm certainly not like that tax collector. I fast twice a week, and I give you a tenth of my income. Now just pause right there for a minute. Before we look at the, the tax collector, let's look at the, the Pharisee. In this story, Jesus holds this Pharisee up uh, as, as a not good example uh, for what it is to walk close to God, to have a relationship with God. And the, the worst part about it is the Pharisee doesn't realize he doesn't have a relationship with God. He thinks he has a relationship with God, but that relationship with God uh, is, is focused on him. Yeah, and his ability to do the, the things he thinks is right. So he's in the have to well, world. He is saying, I have to give, I have to fast, I have to pray. That is what makes me righteous. That's what makes me close to God. Yeah, because we're seeing all of those things right. as an example in that moment. Right. He's, he's talking says, to God. He's I fast giving, twice a week. Right, and he's I fasting. give you a tenth okay. of my income. It's his actions that for him make him viable for God. Make him someone that God can be in relationship with. Right, so let's continue. It says, But the tax collector stood at a distance and dared not even lift his eyes to heaven as he prayed. Instead, he beat his chest in sorrow, saying, O oh God, be merciful to me, for I am a sinner. I tell you, this sinner, not the Pharisee, returned home justified before God. For those who exalt themselves will be humbled, and those who humble themselves will be exalted. Okay, let's pray. Father, this passage of scripture that we're beginning today it, it comes straight from your heart we know that your word says that you resist the proud but that you give grace to the humble help us today to embrace humility as we look at these four disciplines so that we move from having to do them to getting to do them getting to relate and connect with you God we desire to create a relationship with you and these four things will help us do that. But it starts with a humble heart towards you and a humble heart towards these things. So God, come and speak your word today through Corey and I, as crazy as that may sound. Use us. Help us to fade away to the back. And God, let your word, your spirit take center stage today. In the precious name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. And amen. So our big idea today is that a humble heart sees fasting as a gift from God. In this story, in Luke chapter 18, Jesus is saying, look, the difference between the religious guy that thought he had it all together, that was doing all of these things, and the not religious guy who wasn't doing any of these things, but was justified by God, the big difference was he was humble. Humility is the turning point for us as we look at these four things. If we uh, approach fasting, praying, giving, and serving with a humble heart, realizing that we are invited to be a part of what God wants to do in the earth, this changes everything. It's not a drudgery anymore. None of these things are things we have to do. These are things that we get to do. And so a humble heart uh, sees fasting as a privilege, as an opportunity, as something that uh, will be a blessing to those around them and themselves. Right, so today we wanted to look at um, kind of like the why, what, where, when of fasting um, so that we could leave here today with an understanding of the importance of fasting, give you some scriptural references of fasting, and um, let's just be real honest up front. We are also growing in fasting. This is years of us uh, in the journey of fasting and applying fasting and Seeing that fasting is um, a discipline that's needed in our lives. And some people fast 
all the time. I will share with you publicly um, that last year God shared with me that there will come a time in my life where I, where I will personally be fasting more than I will be eating. I obviously haven't gotten to that part of my life yet. Okay? But it's a journey of fasting. Um, and, and I know that God has called me to that journey. What's important, though, is that we don't lose ourselves in the process of growing in fasting to where we become like this religious hypocrite right. in the story, where fasting loses its purpose, it loses its value, because we just are stuck in a rope thing where we have to do it to be righteous or to be holy or for God to be pleased with us. Right, because it is, it is a part of understanding why, why we're fasting, what we're fasting, how we're fasting. And so we're going to talk about that today. From a scriptural point of view. So today we're going we're gonna to start with the question, why do we fast? And specifically right now, why are we fasting um, the January 1st to the 21st as corporately for the church? And so um, in 2 Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14, it says, Then if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sins and restore their land. It's interesting to me that the very first thing that he calls them to do is what? Humble themselves. Again, here, anything that we do for God and with God should start in this humble place where we say, you know what, God, would you, would you, would you take, take what I'm about to give you uh, and, and just make it, make it yours. Humble ourselves, then pray and seek his face and turn from our wicked ways. That is the power of this, this idea of humility. Yeah, and, and so as a nation, we are joining hundreds of churches, not just in our nation, but around the world. Uh, January 1st through the 21st in corporate fasting and prayer and worship to seek the Father's face at the very first, not just of this year, but now of this new decade, um, to seek the Lord uh, so that we can really um, die to our own flesh and hear the Holy Spirit and what he has for us. So we are joining in corporate prayer, corporate worship. Uh, as, as a kingdom of God uh, so that we can hear him. And so when we die to flesh, we hear more of the spirit. And so that's, that's the why for the January 1st through the 21st. Uh, we didn't, it's not just an arbitrary thing. Uh, we are joining with our brothers and sisters all over the globe uh, to, to stand together. I think, though, it's important for us to say why we, why we um, the reasons we the reasons that are not, are not good for fasting. Okay. okay. For a second here. You know what I mean? Well, we didn't get there yet. Okay. So give me one more second. Okay, go ahead. Sorry. Um, uh, I will get there. I think it's important because a lot of people fast for the wrong reasons. Yes, we'll, we'll get there in just a moment. Yeah. So um, another reason why we are we do fast, okay? So cor that, that was why we, we fast January 1st to the 21st, you know, on a specifically level, on a yeah. corporate level. Another reason why we actually fast is because Jesus himself actually fast. So if you look in scripture in Matthew 4 verses 2 to 4, it states, for 40 days and 40 nights he fasted. Okay, so let me just take a poll. Has anybody done a 40-day fast? Okay, so there are spiritual giants who actually do Jesus' fast for 40, 40 days, okay? So, but this is Jesus, and, and this is a journey, and maybe at some point in time, the Holy Spirit will call you to do a 40-day fast. But it's important for us to see that this is Jesus. So here we go. It says, for 40 days and 40 nights, he, Jesus, fasted and became very hungry. Can we just say amen to that? Yeah. Okay. During the time, the devil came and said to him, if you are the son of God, tell these stones to become loaves of bread. But Jesus told him, no. The scripture says people do not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. We see very clearly here that during a time of fast, that yes, our bodies will become hungry, but it is important for us to be fed by the word of God. So why do we fast? We fast because it's not just something that is Old Testament. It is something that we see the Lord and Savior do. So it's something that we should also do. And it's something that temptations, although there, 
We can actually overcome temptation during a time of fast. It doesn't make us weak. It makes us stronger because we're in our word. And we see that because Jesus shows us that in scripture. Another reason to fast, John 3, 30. It says, he must become greater and greater, and I must become less and less. This is something that happens in us when we partake in fasting because our spirit man becomes stronger when our flesh becomes weak. Uh, Steve, do you have that picture back there, bud, um, of the, the night sky? Do you have, do you have that back there? Um, if, if you do, if you want to pop it up there. Um, there, I was thinking about this this week, and the Lord kind of uh, gave me an illustration. Um, have you ever seen one of those photographs of the night sky where you can see every star? You can see the Milky Way. You can see, like, all the details of the galaxies and, like, just this idea of, like, just getting, like, sucked into God's creation. Well, the fact of the matter is, is that if you go outside here in Pennsylvania and look up, you're not going to see that, are you? Everybody with me? This is important. <coughs> to get a picture like that or to get a view like that, what do you have to do? You have to go somewhere where there are no lights. Right. It's hard to see those things. They're there. But in our world, because there are so many other uh, artificial lights, uh, it's hard to see the real lights. Y'all follow? Mm -hmm. This is what fasting is. Fasting is us saying, you know what? I'm going to turn down the, the, the lights in my life that are artificial. That are, I'm going to let my flesh feel a little pain. I'm going to get hungry in my flesh and weak in my flesh so that I can go to a place where I can see God better and hear God better. That is, that is what fast, that's why we fast. We don't fast to get what, uh, what we want from God. We don't fast to manipulate uh, Him. We don't fast so that we can prove that we are super spiritual or that we uh, got it all together. We fast so that we can grow closer to God, that we can hear His voice and see Him in ways that we never uh, have, uh, could have uh, in our normal environment. Right, so reasons not to fast. Obligation. Yeah, because we say you should do it. Legalism. Yeah, because somebody says it's something you have to do. <coughs> Manipulation. Because you want to get God to listen to you. Right. Instead, we should look at the way um, the psalmist looked at it in Psalm 63.1. It says, Oh God, you are my God. I earnestly search for you. My soul thirsts for you. My whole body longs for you in this parched and weary land where there is no water. What a different way of looking at fasting. When do we fast is the next question. After we have prepared our hearts and minds for the journey. This is so important. So I was thinking about this this week in particular because of all of the Christmas gatherings. And um, there is an incredible uh, five-day preparation fast on YouVersion that I believe that we have shared via the website um, that I would encourage anybody to take. Um, it, it's a great um, five-day prep. YouVersion. It's a YouVersion Bible study. Bible study. Sorry. Thank you for clarification. Um, and it really helped me, um, I think it was like a year ago that I actually did that YouVersion study. And I, I had shared it with staff and, and they also thought it was good. So we, we put it in the plan to um, do for this year. But while I was um, prepping and studying again for this, uh, this study or for this fast, um, the Lord was sharing with me. Um, another picture of what it looks like to go on a 21 day or a 40 day fast because he is preparing my heart for longer fasts, and um, he he showed me what it was like to go on a long vacation now for any of you that know I love going to Disney World it's my favorite place in the whole world like I know I have some other friends here in the house that love Disney World too <laughs> But it, it is like legit. I could stay in Disney for months and never get tired of it. 
Um, so I was thinking about this, and I was thinking about how when I prep to go to Disney World, I start planning like a year in advance because I want it to be perfect, down to the fact that when, I, when my kids were little, I would even plan their outfits out for the days in the parks so that their outfits would match the parks that we would go to. Okay. I know. <laughs> it's because for me, the experience of the day and the pictures, I wanted it all to be perfect. And the Lord said, why would you plan more for Disney than what you would for my presence? <gasps> and then I started thinking about a trip to grandma's and how I miss my trips to my grandmother's. And I I was thinking about how nowadays everybody has FaceTime capability. I didn't have that with my grandma. Um, but how cool it is for people with grandmas that have it now. Um, think about this. Nowadays, you can email your grandmother or FaceTime your grandmother to talk to them, but you really don't experience the smell or the taste of your grandmother's cookies. <clears throat> you actually have to go and sit to get their hugs, their wet kisses, and the taste of the cookies. And God was just kind of putting together for me what it really means to fast. And the length of time, the fast, and, and what the experience of the fast could be if we prepped for the journey. See, if I just want to do a day fast, it doesn't take as much time or prep. But if I want to do a seven day fast and experience the taste and the smells and the experience of sitting in the Lord's presence, then I had better do a lot of prepping to experience the taste and the smells and the sweetness of his presence. Because I have to leave everything else behind <laughs> to truly experience the seven days with him. Does this make sense to you? Mm -hmm. If not, I'm never going to really accomplish the time with him because I'm going to have my foot somewhere else and try to be with him. It's kind of like FaceTiming. Now, I, I might be doing a bad job explaining this, but I hope I'm not because in these next 21 days for me, I don't want to FaceTime God. I want to be in his presence. I don't want to just give up food to FaceTime him. I don't, I don't want to, I don't, I don't want to give up something just so that I'm manipulating or obligating. Instead, I, I want to figure out where my heart has to be so that I have the right perspective and understand the journey that I have to take. Now, Jeremiah, you and I have talked a lot about perspective and why we fast, and <laughs> you've been with me when we've packed for Disney. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. One of the things that has been difficult about the fast is sometimes God doesn't tell us what we're giving up. Like you and I have talked a lot about what these next 21 days look like. And, and it's not always like, well, you're just giving up food. Like sometimes, sometimes it, it goes all the way up until like the day of and you kind of have to make a decision like, well, Lord, is this what you want me to do? And then you, you kind of give it as an offering and you wait to hear from him. 
It's, it's, it's not the same as planning a trip. Does this make sense? Mm -hmm. Because you, you have to hear from the Holy Spirit in the midst of your decisions. You have to make a decision to give him something and wait to hear from him. No different than a child coming to you and saying, hey mom, is this okay? And then you responding back, yeah, mom, oh, yeah, mom, yeah, honey, that's, that's good. Let's, let's do that together. So why do we fast? Hmm. Well, we do it to take a journey with God. Because he asks us for a relationship. And it strengthens our spirit with him. See, this is something that the Pharisee in Jesus' story had no idea about when it came to fasting. Fasting for him was a means to an end for him. It, was, it wasn't the gift that it was intended to be. God wanted that Pharisee, just like the sinner, to experience the power of fasting, to experience the gift that it is. But it comes through a humble heart. So we talked about why we fast. We talked about when we fast. Um, what do we fast? What is fasting? How do we, how do we fast from a biblical standpoint? Um, I know a lot of people, um, a lot of people will say, well, I'm fasting uh, social media, or I'm fasting breakfast, or I'm fasting completely, or a partial fast, a full fast, what, what, you know, Daniel fast, Ezra fast, like there's all these different kinds of fasts, uh, and oftentimes we, we don't really understand what it is that we're doing when we go into a fast. So um, talk to them about that, babe. Okay. So scripturally, a fast is food. Yeah. I love you all. And I know that the Bible did not have these. <laughs> okay? And if you are truly addicted to this, and you need to cut this out because it takes time away, from, or televisions, because it takes time away from God, then yes, figure this out. But scripturally, it is food because hunger pains cause you to think about God in a whole new way. <laughs> it, scripturally, it's food. Can I give you a verse that I just feel like the Holy Spirit wanted us to focus on when it comes to what fasting is? It's Matthew 19, 26. It says, Jesus looked at them intently and said, humanly speaking, it is impossible. But with God, everything is possible. So if you think there is no way I can do this. Then that is what you're supposed to fast. Can I just be real? So there is, there is not, I'm not telling you what you have to fast. I'm saying scripturally it's food. Like if you do a, a search. Okay. But if you in your brain say, there is no way I can live without this. This scripture is something I believe that God has given us as a church to grow because what Jesus is saying to us is with God all things are possible and he is calling us to grow and I believe that it and, and I'm gonna say this and I love you all very much I know that there are a lot of sicknesses that need healed and there are a lot of things that need you need to have regiment, regimented food intakes, okay? So what I am not telling you is to get yourself sick. But what I am telling you is that your doctor is a phone call away and fasting is totally possible with a doctor's awareness. That's part of the prep. That's, that if, if, you, if you have extenuating things that uh, in, in your health uh, you know, and your body, then just start by talk, talking to your doctor. He'll be able to tell or she'll be able to tell you what you can give up or what you shouldn't or what, you know, how you can kind of move forward in that. Um, I think the main thing, though, is that a lot of people will just kind of use it as a, a shield to say, nope, I don't have to do that because of this issue or that issue. But please don't go the opposite direction. And say, and go wild, go crazy. <laughs> God's gonna, gonna take care of me. Yeah. I'm just going to fast. You have to like, be wise. I, I, I think that there is this. 
I, there's this reality right now that I, I there, this is part of that journey. You would not go on a journey without taking the proper precautions. And that's why we put this after the last point. Like this is very, very important. And God desires the relationship with you. You know, so so this is part. What what do we fast? This so, is part so of that. what do we fast? Let's 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 kind of bring it in. So we fast food. Yes, or not fast items. food. Yeah. Well, I mean, you know, honestly. No, no. I mean, don't just eat fast food. I'm saying if you have an issue with fast food, maybe that's what God is calling you to give up. We a few years back, we had somebody in our congregation that they did uh, McDonald's sweet tea every day. Like it was part of their like their reality. They love sweet tea, and one of the coolest um, testimonies came from her saying, "You know what? I'm going to give up that sweet tea that I love so much, and I'm for the 21 days. I'm just not going to do the sweet tea." Now it was a challenge for her. It was tough for her. We had that somebody was, that gave up salt. We had somebody that yeah, they gave up table salt. Like just they they put salt on everything. And they said, for 21 days, I'm not going to do that. Now, that, but that was, those were because they had prayed about it, and that was very specific. Now, listen, I, I don't know what the Holy Spirit is going to reveal to you, and it could it's part of your journey, okay? I, I am saying you should pray about it, and whatever the Lord tells you, it is something that you should hold to. If you're, if you're new at fasting, then don't... Commit to being without food and water for 20 day, 21 days. You know what I mean? Like, just take a step of faith, though, wherever you may be. It might be, you know what, I'm not going to eat while the sun's up. It might be, uh, you know, and, and you, it's just in a conversation between you and God. We're inviting you to begin that conversation. That's all we're doing. Are you, and, and over the next couple of days, you've got a couple more days before the first. You have the opportunity to say, God, what can I do? How can I fast that will be a blessing to me uh, and will be a blessing to uh, those around me because but it, of what God does in my life? It should not be something that you already do. Because it is the difficulty that draws you to him in that moment. So if you never eat breakfast, you can't give up something that you don't already not do. Okay, because, for instance, if I never eat breakfast, then me not sitting at a table to not spend time with him is not going to create more relationship True with him. story. Can we just say this real quick? If you are fasting without praying, you're just starving. Can I get an amen from the church? Don't, don't, when we go into this fast, guys, listen, don't just, don't just deprive yourself of food. Yes, deprive yourself of food. If you feel the hunger pains, you're doing it right. Now listen, here's the thing. If you feel the hunger pains, but the hunger pains don't remind you to get on your knees and get away to a quiet place, and you're not preparing yourself to be able to do that, then you're just starving yourself to starve yourself. There is an element of, of presence in the midst of that hunger. Yeah. That is where the power of God truly begins to work itself and we move from, I have to fast, to, I get to. Because those of us that are committed to it, in the next three days, four days, after we start this thing, there's going to be something that takes place in us. I look forward to that. There's a switch that happens in my spirit and my heart, where I start to see things more clearly in the spirit. And the things that I've been letting happen in my life, I begin to say, you know what? I can make this change now. I can let God work in my life in ways that I didn't have the faith to believe in before. There's something powerful about the fast in that sense. And it happens about two or three days into a fast where we truly are letting our flesh uh, go to the back and we let the Holy Spirit then take the lead. But it does involve food. It does involve our physical bodies getting weakened on some <laughs> level. Or denying ourselves on some level. So I think we should share some um, things that were not good. Okay. That we like some some bad decisions. From experience. We, yes. Yes. <laughs> okay. So just before before we let you go, these are some bad decisions that we made. Um, we started the Daniel fast as a team while doing massive construction. <laughs> Okay, um, let me share with you. Do not do any massive construction or major work while on a fast. 
If you are depriving your body, you do not want to increase physical movement. It, it's not healthy. Um, we we didn't put all of that together. That was that was part of us not prepping for the journey. Okay. Um, the other thing would be um, this is a decision between you and the Lord. Which is why corporate is not about us telling you what to do. <clears throat> so if the Lord is sharing with you to do something, but not sharing with your spouse what to do something, please share with your spouse what the intended is to do. And please don't be aggravated if the Lord is telling your spouse that they can have red meat and you can't. <laughs> Can I make a suggestion? If you're allowed to have bacon and your spouse isn't, please don't cook it in the house. <laughs> also a mistake I made. Um, you know, the, the truth is, it's much healthier if the team of you can come together on agreement yeah. on what is good in the house and what is not. Um, as a whole, it is a great 21 days to pray together as a husband and wife or as a family. And I would encourage you to set up a time in the morning or in the evening to do a family devotion if you do not already do it. Um, share what God is doing in your hearts and in your minds. It's a great way to start off the year and start a pattern. It takes 21 days to form a habit. Good. What better habit to start in 2020? Would you stand with us this morning? And Father, we start by humbling ourselves. As we move into a time of, of prayer and fasting together at the beginning of this new year, God, we're asking that we would embrace humility. So that the fast that we do, God, that it would be pleasing to you. And God, that it would be a blessing to us as we draw closer to you. Father, we repent of all the times where, God, we have fasted to get you to do what we wanted or to help you hear us better. And instead, God, we embrace that the next 21 days are for us to get to know you better. To hear your voice better. To feel your presence and to follow your spirit more closely. We humble ourselves and we say, let your will be done in our lives. So all across the room, if you are um, wanting to join us, in the 21 day fast on any level um, would you just lift your hands right where you are i want to pray over those of us that are going to walk this journey together starting january 1st with your hands raised all across the room uh, just receive this holy spirit i pray that those that are stepping out in faith uh, to begin to fast together with our, their church family that you would strengthen them that what is not possible uh, on its own that you will make it possible. It's not humanly possible, but with God, all things are possible. Help us to take a step of faith. Help us to hear your voice. And as we step into this fast on an individual level, we step into it together corporately as well. We thank you, God, that you are going to do amazing things at the beginning of this next, next decade and this next year. And it starts with the firsts. The first days of this year will set the tone for the rest of it. So God, we choose to fast. We choose to humble ourselves. We choose to pray and seek your face. We choose to humble ourselves. We ask that you would give us the strength to do it. In the precious name of Jesus. And everyone said, Amen. Amen. Amen.